Today, I'm gonna to teach you everything you need to know to be a DoorDash driver. This video will cover everything from scheduling your first shift to how to use the app to pickups and drop-offs. What's going on, everybody? My name is Zach, I hope you are doing well. Before we get into the video, if you're new here, please do consider pressing that like and subscribe button. If you are kind enough to subscribe, let me know in the comment section below. Tell me your name and the market you drive in, and I'll be sure to thank you at the end of my next ride-along video. Before we jump into the app, it is worth mentioning that depending on if you have an Android or an iPhone, the app might look slightly different. And this is also true market to market. If your app is different from mine, the differences will be tiny. Let's jump into the Dasher app. We're going top to bottom, left to right. So the first thing we have here is this little bell notification thing. Uh, this basically just tells you what's going on with DoorDash. Uh, so like account security, reminding you to change your password periodically, uh, mask stuff. So moving on, the next thing we have up here is this little chat bubble. This is where your customers can harass you. Hello. Admittedly, I've actually never used this. I always, and I'll show you where we contact customers later. Honestly, I don't even know that that menu actually works. If you're in the middle of a delivery, it'll take you into a different menu to respond to questions and stuff from your customers. So we'll go ahead and close this out. Next thing is promotions. This will tell you uh, if they're offering any sort of bonuses for you to drive at a certain time. Uh, common things that'll get you bonuses are strange hours, like for example, midnight to like 3 a.m. or inclement weather. So uh, it is worth noting uh, that they will show you bonuses of markets nearby. So don't automatically assume that the numbers you're seeing here, like the $1.50, dollar or whatever, are for your market. Because in this case, what they're showing right now is not for my market. Let's go ahead and close that out. Next thing we have here is this uh, ADT button, this little um, blue shield with the cross. If we press that, if you're feeling sketched out, you can uh, request a call back from ADT. I believe they have your location information. So um, I know a couple people who have used it. I've personally never used it, but it's there if you need it. And if it is absolutely an emergency, you can swipe for 911 help and they will have your location as well. So we'll go ahead and close out of this menu and move on. Up here, we can press the little help button and you can scroll through here and find the category that you want. You can search by typing in up here or you can press cancel and search like that by pressing that button. So we'll cancel out of that. And then you can also press the phone button to call DoorDash support. So um, as a new driver, I'm sure you will use that frequently, but it'll get easier, I promise. Uh, moving on, down here where it says return to Dash, uh, so that will look different for you if you're not currently on a Dash. That instead would say either schedule or Dash now. If your market is gray, it'll say schedule. If your market is red, it'll say Dash now. So uh, let's go into schedule down here. Uh, this is where you can schedule yourself shifts. It is worth mentioning that you can schedule way longer than you intend to drive, and there is no penalty if you decide to end your Dash early. So like, let's say I wanted to drive from 6.30 to 7 p.m. tonight, we would just select it and then press save dash. So I don't wanna do that, so I'm gonna close it out. Uh, going back into uh, the schedule screen, the next icon to the right of that is accounts. And here, this is gonna show uh, some personal information that I'm gonna to have to blur out. So uh, this has your name, uh, phone number, last name, your market, your email address, now in the tabs up top, we have vehicles. So I actually need to change that. I no longer drive a Ford Fusion. And then to the right of that, we have settings. And here you can choose your navigation. You can manage your account. Uh, promotional push notifications, I actually want that off. I'm glad I saw that. Um, here's one, cash on delivery. You can uncheck that and I would strongly encourage you to. Unless you wanna carry cash and make change for people, uncheck that one. Uh, you can also log out of the app. We are not going to do that. So moving to the right of account, we have ratings. If we click that, we can see that currently I'm sitting at a 4.94, so not bad. Um, we can go in here and we can see more specific information. So 97 people rated me five out of five stars because they are fucking awesome like that. Uh, two people gave me four star and one Karen gave me a one star. Uh, if we scroll further down, we can see what the one star was about, and it was about following delivery instructions. So uh, I, I think you kind of get the gist on that. So I wanna go back into the rating screen. Now take a look at that 2%. That is my acceptance rate. DoorDash is going to send you a ton of bad offers. I want to make it 
crystal clear that you are under no obligation to accept a single order that they send you. You are not an employee. You are an independent contractor, and therefore you are not required to take a single order that they send you. They cannot punish you, and they cannot deactivate you for declining order after order. Okay, rant's over. Moving on. Uh, down below this, we have completion rate. This one does matter. Do not let that fall below 80% or they can deactivate you. So mine is sitting at 90, that's not bad. Uh, I would encourage you to keep yours at 90 or higher. So your completion rate will fall if you accept an order and then choose to unassign it. And I will show you how to do that uh, here in a little bit and I'll explain why you may want to. Next up, we have on-time delivery. I'm currently sitting at 96%. DoorDash is very good about sending you to restaurants when the order is ready. Uh, having said that, it won't happen every time, but DoorDash makes it pretty easy to keep that number high. Following that one, we have our lifetime deliveries. That is how many deliveries I have personally done on DoorDash. Uh, I have hundreds on Uber Eats, and I have a few thousand on Grubhub. So uh, following the ratings icon, we have earnings. This one is self-explanatory. Uh, this is the first time I've went out driving this week, and I've only done one offer so far, so haven't made a whole ton of money. Um, we have our deposits and transfers. We can click into that and we can see how little I've actually been driving recently, but we can also choose uh, cash out with fast pay. If you have a balance It will charge you a dollar 99, but it is there if you want the money like that up top here, we have this little bank icon. If we click that, that will take you to your deposit settings. So this is where you enter your banking information, or if you want to be paid instantly, you would enter a uh, debit card number. So I'm gonna go ahead and back out of that, back out of that. So I believe we pretty much covered it. Now let's go dash. Okay, so now that we have our first shift scheduled, let's take a look at the app once we're dashing. So we're going to go from top to bottom, left to right. So starting from the top left, we have the menu button. If we press that, the options are pause orders, if we press this, this will pause your dash for 35 minutes. Be careful though. Sometimes it'll pause it for 10 if it feels like you haven't accepted enough orders or if you've paused a lot. So uh, it's usually 35 minutes, but keep a very close eye on that because they will play games. If you pause your dash, you should probably set a timer on your phone so you don't forget to unpause it. So let's go ahead and uh, resume and we'll go back into the menu now. So the next option is end dash. That one's pretty self-explanatory. If you press that, it'll kick you offline. The following option is extend dash. And I tried to press it and it says no available slots to extend or something like that. So if there was additional time available in your market, it would pop up a little like spinny wheel thing and you would select what time you wanted to drive until. Next up we have view home screen. So if we click that, it just takes us back to the home screen. So we can uh, return to dash and then we'll go back into the menu. Finally, navigation uh, is uh, pretty self-explanatory as well. You choose the map that you wanna use. Um, the DoorDash app by default will be set to in-app navigation. Some people prefer it, I do not. I like mine set to Google Maps during the day and Apple Maps at night. So the last option here is read instructions on arrival. Your phone will say out loud if uh, the customer wants you to leave the order at their door or if they want you to hand it to them. So that is going to about wrap up the uh, menu here. Um, there is one more icon in the top uh, top right, excuse me. Uh, that's just um, messages if you're on an order. Uh, I've never actually used this screen either, but it's there. So uh, just be aware of that. Let's go ahead and close out of the menu. Okay, to the right of looking for orders, we have this blue shield icon with a little cross in the middle. That is for ADT and 911. And then the question mark, question mark icon isn't going to do anything right now because we're not on an order. This just says, why am I not getting orders? And it's going to tell you because it's not busy right now. So we can press done, close that. Uh, down below, we have uh, my whopping total of $0 for this dash. Um, that is your running total. That is not for the last order. That is how much you've made for this specific dash. It's worth noting, if you schedule yourself different times throughout the day and your dash ends and then you start again, that amount will not include the previous dash. It is only the shift that you are currently on. Uh, down below that, we have the hotspots. Uh, we can scroll through those. Uh, I would caution you against chasing those. Those are nothing more than restaurants that recently had an order placed. I wouldn't chase them. 
I forgot two buttons. So if we press this little square button down here, it's gonna zoom out the map. If we press the little locate me thing, it's gonna zoom back in. That pretty much wraps it up for the waiting for an order screen. Okay, so here we have an order that we are not going to take. Uh, this is McDonald's, uh, it's four items, and it's going 5.1 miles for $8. We're gonna press decline. Decline again, and you can choose a reason in here. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and just choose something at random. It's worth noting, depending on what phone you're using, you may have a different menu. It may look something like this, where you just tap decline and then press decline again and it's gone. Also, the acceptance rate screen that you just saw with the 2%, ignore it. Don't take bad orders. They cannot and will not deactivate you for not accepting a majority of the orders. You are an independent contractor and you should not take low or no tip offers. Okay, I wanna bring attention to this screen that you're looking at right now. If you decline too many orders in a row, they will send you to this screen. It's like a digital timeout, and frankly, it's nothing more than a scare tactic. Uh, you are not in any kind of trouble, and all you have to do is press resume dash. That's it. It is worth noting that sometimes they will flip the order of those buttons, so pay close attention when you click them. I got a mod pizza that I'm gonna go ahead and accept. It's $5.25, which is typically below my $6 minimum, but it's going really close. So I'm gonna go ahead and accept this, and I, actually, matter of fact, I could see Mod Pizza from where I'm sitting right now. So I am going to go ahead and hit Arrived at Store. Uh, obviously, you would not be able to do this if you're not close enough to the store. But I'm going to go ahead and hit Arrived at Store. And I want to show you a few things in here. So again, uh, top to bottom, uh, left to right. So up here, we have the menu screen. If we press this, uh, this will show you uh, the restaurant. And it'll show you what the customer ordered. If you go back now it'll show you the customer's address with the delivery instructions and what they ordered again if we oh also in the customer screen you can you can press the phone icon to call them or the chat bubble to send them a message let's go back we can pause orders after we finish the delivery so that will start that 35 minute time i think that's pretty much it everything else is uh, the same as before if we close out that window uh, we're going to skip over the ADT and 911 thing, and we're going to press a little help icon. So here we have a few options. Can't do this order. We're going to come back to that one because that one is extremely important. Red card declined. Um, there are fewer and fewer red card orders, and most of them are like your Safeway shop and pays or like Walgreens. Um, so if your card ever gets declined, that's what you would press. Can't find the store. Pretty self-explanatory. Store is closed. Do not press this. If the store is closed and you show up, call support. They will pay you half pay. Uh, FAQ and phone support. So that's if you have an issue and you need to call them. Or finally, chat support if you want to chat with them. The one I want to focus on is can't do this order. This is called unassigning it. So if you click that, the customer's name will come up. And if we click it again, it'll give us a reason that we're unassigning the order. So you would choose your reason and press submit. Uh, this can be really beneficial for a couple of reasons. If there is a ridiculous wait at the restaurant and it's not worth the money, you might want to kick it. Uh, ultimately, it's up to you if you choose to unassign an order. Just make sure your completion rate stays above 80%. Let's go ahead and get out of that menu. And there's one more thing I wanted to show you in here. If we scroll all the way down to the bottom here and it says, waiting for your order, tell us what's happening. So if we click that, uh, if the restaurant is running behind and you are going to be late to pick up your order, choose a reason why in this menu and that will prevent them from leaving a bad rating for you. Anyway, I'm going to go and pick this up and I will check back in when I do. This specific restaurant has racks. Many will not. If they do have a rack, general rule of thumb is you can just walk up and check for your order. If it's there, grab it and go. If not, just check in with the restaurant employee. Another common thing that you'll get is fast food orders. Many fast food places are drive through only currently. If they're drive through only, just get in line. When you get up to the box, say, hey, I'm checking on a DoorDash for whoever. If you're able to go inside, that is usually the best bet. Again, check for racks. If they have a rack, just sit and wait for your order to come up. If they don't have a rack, check in with an employee. Okay, so now that I have the pizza picked up, we're just gonna go ahead and hit confirm pickup. And it will pop up this other screen and we confirm again. And now it'll show us the customer's address and we simply press directions. I'll check back in when we get close to the customer. The customer requested you leave the order at their door. They added the following instructions. Leave the high door. That's what I was talking about before.
Once you get to the customer's door, set the food down, press complete delivery, then take photo. Make sure the food and the address, if possible, are visible. Complete delivery, confirm, and you're done. And that's how you make money with DoorDash. If you haven't done so yet, please consider pressing that like and subscribe button. If you are kind enough to subscribe, let me know in the comments section below. Tell me your name and the market you drive in, and I'll be sure to thank you at the end of my next ride-along video. My name is Zach. Take care.